my good morning y'all so sorry dina called and woke me up <laughs> my son kept me up until three o'clock last night and this weekend has kept me up but i'm so tired <clears throat> But I'm here now. My bad. Oh my goodness. I feel like I need a whole week to like just get caught up and sleep and get my house clean. And jeez. Good morning. So sorry. Oh, I'm really tired. Good morning. Steve's supposed to bring me a cup of coffee. Good morning. Oh, oh my God. Heather said good morning, sleepy head. <laughs> I love that. <clears throat> so sorry. <clears throat> I'm super exhausted. We had that event and it was all weekend long. That outdoor expo was all weekend long. Um, may your coffee be strong. Amen. <laughs> that outdoor expo was all weekend long. I've worked all weekend long. And I got so much more to do. And it didn't help that my son kept me up till three in the morning. Three. Three. Would not go to sleep. Drove me insane. Uh. <laughs> Katie. No, not quit. Just tired. I need like a week. Um, I, I like need to like a whole week to get caught up on everything. Okay, maybe I'll get it done this week. Phew. Yeah, he loves the couch, and he just he would not go to sleep. Like he kept saying, um, he couldn't. So like I even we gave him a. <laughs> We gave him, I gave him melatonin to help him go to sleep um, in hopes that he needed a sleep aid. He thought he did anyway. Thank you. And uh, I don't know. That like had the reverse effect. Boy couldn't go to bed. Like he was just up and crying and he's 10. Just could not do it. Like could not. He could not go to sleep. And Rebecca will be praying for you, friend. I was like, wasn't I already not what I want? Her little rascal when he wasn't on. He also funny. Right? He used to not, like, uh, he used to have to take it to go to sleep because of where he's, like, where he has sensory processing and uh, he's on the autism spectrum and stuff. He used to have to have it to sleep. And then he outgrew it, I, like, needing it to go to sleep, which is wonderful. And then just last night, I don't know, boy was struggling. Made me struggle. All right. Kim, I say that we got like a lot of traffic but I made some amazing connections um I had people come in the store that was like um I had a pastor come in and me and him and his wife had such a good conversation um and then somebody else came in um he ran like I don't know if y'all I don't know what it's called but it's like um, the Christian version of Boy Scouts, so to say, like, I don't really know how to explain it besides that, but it's really cool. And they do like a girl and a boy one. Um, and that person walked in. So like, just like 
wonderful connections, just like really awesome connections. Um, and then Lori, one of our friends that is on here came, um, excuse me, came to spend the weekend here. So we went out to eat with them. I tried getting my house clean. That did not work. It's just been, I don't think it's Royer. Nope, it's none of those. Steven, what's it called? Steven, tell me. It's not called that. I did not get your message yet. I have I have so many messages to reply to. It's not even funny. I will be getting back to those probably after I get off here this morning. After I get off of here, I'll probably go um, sit on my swing and good look up. And uh, answer all my messages. See, I can't do magnesium to go to sleep. Uh, it makes me, like, it makes my mind race. Her tag's blue because she is a, uh, like, a moderator. Good morning. Okay. You need a weekend for your weekend. You ain't a lion. <laughs> you ain't a lion. Here it is. It's here. I'm waiting to take a sip of it. Oh, boy. Yeah. That is so <laughs> It was so good. Oh, I wish I could just drink the whole thing. Just set up an IV. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, it was something like for sleep. The magnesium. It made my mind race. I was ready to go, friend. Like <laughs> the coffee be coffee and yes. We'll definitely pray for your surgery. Okay. Since I'm late, let's go ahead and get started. Y'all ready? I did not quit. <laughs> Don't y'all know I ain't no quitter. Don't y'all know that. I ain't no quitter. Oh, man, that is so good. All right, question. Um, this morning for coffee talk, what y'all tell me y'all want to do depends on what Bible I'm going to use, so I need to know. Um, this week, I definitely want to do an overview of Fruits of the Spirit, because when I've done the Fruits of the Spirit one time before, um, or not Fruits of the Spirit, sorry. The, no, is that what you want? He either wanted Fruits of the Spirit or Armor of God. Somebody reached out to me and messaged me about that. Um I'll have to go look at mine and his messages. Uh, so it's either going to, is it the armor? We talked about it Friday. Was it the armor? Um, so we are, we're going to do that one day this week um, because somebody wanted it. And I think I went over it before, but I don't think it downloaded. Um, and since now, when we are doing videos, we have them over here on the YouTube. I'm um, not going to worry about downloading them. So um, I guess it just didn't get put on. YouTube because it probably wouldn't download TikTok. So, um, Armor of God or Judges, um, which I talked already, which I talked about last week. Remember, it's what I wanted to do last week, but then the Lord had other plans. Um, hold on, let me see. I think it's Judges 11. So, take me a minute to find it in this file. Hopefully. Let's see. It was Judges 11 and 12, I do believe. Where's my piece of paper? There it is. Nope, I lied. Uh, it was... Stop now. Stop now. It was Judges 17 and 18. So... Do I want to do Armor of God or Judges 17 and 18? Which we'll probably do both this week. But I figured I'd let y'all 
Y'all tell me which one y'all want to do. What was that? Oh, somebody started a poll. That's cool. Let me click. That's cool. Okay, wait. If you're on TikTok, right here. It's like right here. That's the poll. You can click on it and you can and you can vote. On YouTube, I got because there's not as many people I can actually see. I got three armor and two judges. What armor? Oh, so the armor is winding. I gotta quit y'all. Gosh. Oh. Oh, that's more judges. We can definitely do a fruits of the spirit. Um May or may not do that one this week, but I promised somebody the armor. Um, and then our study box this month is all about the fruits of the spirit, too. So that'd be really cool. Armor is winning over there. I know. So sorry. I can't promise I won't yawn this morning. I don't know I do. I'm so tired. <laughs> armor. All right. So let's go ahead. Um, let's go ahead and she said, I want to do it. We will. All right. So armor one. So that's what we'll do this morning. And then we'll do judges on Wednesday. Judges would be really good because judges, we're going to talk about world versus word, fake worship, selfish gain, not consulting the Lord and empty spiritual condition. Um, but armor or armor. Let's see. So I can't use this Bible. Well, I think I already have it journaled in this. And if so, then I'm going to grab one of these other Bibles I'm going to give away. And we'll journal it in that. Armor of God is Ephesians. Ephesians 6. Here we go. My Ephesians is like holy journal. I love that book. Okay. Yep. Cool, cool. So I have mine journaled, so I'm going to journal it with y'all in a different Bible. Probably one of them I'm going to give away. I want to do some of those lives too. Not that I already don't have so much to do this week, but... I want to do a couple of extra lives that are like using all of the ultimate Bible journaling kit and um, journaling and Bibles that I want to give away. Y'all know what I mean. Y'all know I want to do that. I want to go live and like journal in different Bibles I'm going to give away. And I have different plans for each of these Bibles that I want to give away. Like, I want to, uh, one of them, don't really have much journaling room, so I want to, like, highlight my favorite verses, put sticky notes at the starts of every chapter, you know, like, telling people what those chapters are about, all those things. And then some of the other ones I want to do, like, journaling spots um, or journaling sections. Y'all know what I mean? I want to do that. I'm, I'm going to plan it, and then I'll post when the dates are that I'm going to be doing. Um, so we'll do it that way. So that y'all won't miss it. But I have lots of Bibles to give away. I think this morning. Let's wipe. Let's get this table. Oh, now it's in here. One thing I want to do for myself is go through my big old bookshelf. <laughs> get rid of some things. All right, this is Big Hoss. And I'm going to be giving away big calls. Um, this is going to be the Bible that I give away for. Uh, hold on. Y'all got to give my brain time to catch up. This is going to be the Bible that I give away uh, for the raising money. So we raised money. And then one of the giveaways, uh, Dina finally got all those names put in a spreadsheet. Amen. She helped me with that. So I didn't go live. If she didn't do it, it wouldn't be done yet. <laughs> Are you serious? I journaled it in this too. 
Are you lying? That's so cool. That's so nice. Look how pretty this is. I can't even look. Look how pretty that looks. Like, wait a minute. That's so pretty. Do I grab another Bible? Wonder what they all say. Wonder how they're all different. Okay. Um, I know. So this is all for people who this one is gonna be given away to the people who uh donated to the foundation when we were fundraising. If you order the uh, study box right now, it'll start this month because they go out next week. I'm going to be writing it this week. This week. I supposed to write last week. I didn't have it. Um, yep. And this week, or this week, this month is about fruits of the spirit. I need to go back to bed. <laughs> oh, man. Alicia knows, so I use random, we put everybody's name in a spreadsheet, so, um, so what we will do is do random number picker from Google, and what, and we'll pick, like, from, you know, one to how many ever, and then it'll pick a number, and that's how we, we will go match that number with a name. If you click on the profile right up here, um, for those of you on YouTube, if you go to PurposeIHope.com, you can learn all about the um, study box. We are on a struggle bus this morning. I apologize. But I was so excited for this morning, too. I was going to wake up early. Mm hmm Yeah. Let's all laugh together. Because <laughs> we know that ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. Let's just all laugh. Um, so I liked this Bible. Don't get me wrong. It's just too big for me. It's just too big for me, but I do like this Bible. I, I call it Big Hoss uh, because it's not something you're going to carry around. However, I did get the uh, CSB version, and it's very hard to determine where your verses are. Um, and I really don't know how to explain that. My hair. I really don't know how to explain that except like it does the verses out on the side and then it doesn't really break them up with numbers like normal Bibles do. You get what I'm saying? So, but it's a great Bible. I just, I don't like how it's numbered out. Um, and it's just too big for me. Literally Big Hoss lives up to its name and it's just. Okay, are y'all ready? We need to go ahead and um, we need to go ahead and pray. Favorite note? I don't know. Oh, we're going to use both of these Bibles and we'll read like my different notes that I wrote because I think this will be interesting. Um, I think this will be really interesting. So, okay. Um, so let's go ahead and pray though. We need to pray before we get started. Yeah, yeah, it's like a 7.5 or an 8 font. I agree with her. I agree with, I think that's Brandy. Um, I agree. Okay, let's go ahead. Girl, I was excited last night to get here, and somehow I still eat snooze. I eat snooze so much, I cut it off. <laughs> Oops. Okay, let's pray uh, this morning. Lord, we just come to you and we praise you and we thank you, Lord. We praise you for all you've done and we thank you for all that you're going to continue to do in each and every one of our lives, Lord. Lord, uh, thank you for friends that that call me, Lord, uh, when I just ain't doing good. Lord, I'm just thankful for uh, the friends that are there and show up, Lord. Um, I'm thankful for everyone on the other side of the screen, Lord, that uh, also got up this morning to come and study your word, Lord. Lord, I'm thankful to be used um, as a vessel by you, Lord. Lord, uh, when we when we become tired and worn down, 
Lord, let us find all of our joy um, and all of our strength through you, Lord, um, the ability to keep going even when life is just exhausting sometimes, Lord. And Lord, I'm just so thankful that you know exactly what that feels like. You know what it's like to, to be tired, Lord. You know what it's like to be exhausted and you know what it's like to show up anyway. So Lord, give us your strength that, that we can uh, endure that and do that this morning. Lord, as we come together and we study your word, open our hearts and our minds to be able to receive from you whatever it is you want to show us this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Um, I use mine for journaling specific words from, wait, from God to me through prayer and for a creative journal and to make it pretty. I don't use it for reading. So yeah, I, I like that, Lord. That's a good idea. Amen. All right, let's read it. It's Ephesians 6. Don't let me run you over now. Ephesians 6, uh, 10 through 20. I guess I'm going to I'm going to read it out of this e uh, CSB. I'm going to read it out of this CSB here. Don't know what that goes to, so let's hope I can remember. Okay. I love that. All right. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Let's go ahead and just read all of it. Um, here we go. Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the wait, yeah, spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. Mm, that's good. Stand therefore with truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up your shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the spirit with everything. Wait, with every prayer and request and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. For this, I am an ambassador in chains. That's good. Pray that I might be bold enough to speak about it if I should, as I should. Ooh, that's good. Okay. That's good. Um, so, armor of God. Let's see. I guess we're just going to start. We're going to start. And we're going to, because I journaled like everything. So, verse 10 says, finally be strengthened in the Lord by his vast strength. So, I wrote, who actually knows how I wrote, um, what I wrote, because I didn't point no arrows to nothing. What's wrong with you, Kelsey? You just got to wing it. Um, but here's what I wrote down, I think. Uh, so in this Bible, I wrote down, this has to come first, the power of his might. Is this what it is? I think so. Yep, I'm pretty positive. Um, the reserving of strength. I'm going to draw some arrows too, because if I'm giving away this Bible, people need to know what they're looking at here. Um. And using that strength. So, oh, that's good. That is good. Be strengthened by the Lord in his vast strength. I bet if you read a King James Version, it probably used might and power. Um, that is really good because it says so. The might is the reserving of strength and the power is the using of the reserve strength. So, it's saying be strengthened by the Lord by his vast strength. So you need to be strengthened by the Lord and then you need to use so said strength. That's good. Hold on, draw my thing. 
Be strengthened by the Lord and then you so said strength. Yep. Uh, ESV. Let's see. So verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. So you reserve the strength and then you use that reserve strength that comes from the Lord. Um, in my ESV, I literally wrote strengthen yourself in God and in his power. So see, it was a lot shorter. Um, there is a big difference between our strength and God's strength. And there is there is nothing we can do here on this here in this world with our strength. So when we are out doing things, when we are doing things for the Lord, when we are showing up for God, when we are when we are, um, you know, doing everything that he has called us to do. Listen, when we do that, we cannot do any of those things out of our strength. Because, look, listen, this one is for example. My strength says just sleep. Because my strength done gone. It worn out. It bye bye. It ain't it ain't here. All right. It's gone. Kelsey tired. But the strength that comes from the Lord says, get up. I got you. You're still gonna be good. Because look, I ain't prepared for any of this. I'm reading my notes that I ain't prepared for none of this because the cousin didn't wake up. Cousin didn't. Usually I at least try to wake up and I prepare. I ain't done any of that this morning. So, which most of the time when I wing it, they're the best ones. Anywho, but my strength says I cannot. I'm tired. My strength, y'all is even saying, y'all, like, Lord, she quit. She done quit us. She quit. My strength says quit. But his strength says keep going. Y'all see what I'm saying? It's, what is it? Okay, so it's my necklace. That scared me. Y'all know my reputation with bugs. It scared me. It was just my necklace. Simmer. We're good. See? But you cannot. Yep, your strength wants to take nap. Amen. But my, but the strength that comes from the Lord is going to tell me, no, nope, you're up. So you get up and you get started. We got a lot of work to do this week, Kelsey. Right? So you are never supposed to rely on your strength. Never supposed to rely on your strength. Your strength is going to run out. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Your strength will run out. His strength will never. So the very first thing that you got to do when you're before, before you even put on this armor is get his strength. Listen, I will even say, oh, this is good. I will even say this. You won't even be able to carry the armor if you don't have his strength. I'm going to say that again because I do. His armor is heavy. He said, when he said, take up your cross and follow me, he was talking about taking up all the things that he endured to all the struggles, all the hardship, all of the, all of just every bit of it. There ain't no way you can take up the cross of the Lord without his strength, because you're not going to be able to do this on your own. You're not going to be able, you ain't even going to be able to carry the armor that he has told you to have and put on if you ain't doing it by his strength. Because if you do it by your strength, listen, it's going to get heavy. But if you do it by his strength, you see, am I stressing? Yes. Is my life in stress right now? Yes. Yes, it is. But do you know what? Life still just been so good. It's still been so good. Um. Is everything done? No. But have I been working every day a little bit more towards getting it done? Yes. But even though I'm so busy right now because I'm just trying to get called up to where I need to be, I'm not. I can't describe it for you. I'm not overwhelmed. Does that make sense? Like, I have so much to do. I have so much to, like, I could be, like, overwhelmed to that. But I'm just good. It's okay. I'm going to get it done when I get it done. And I'm not doing any of this out of my strength. I'm doing it out of his because I know I'm supposed to. So I'm just going to keep pushing away at this one little thing at a time, one little thing at a time, crossing up one little thing at a time. And that's how you have to, like, Go in your life. If if you don't put on his armor, you're not going to be able, you're not going to be able um, to, to hold up. Listen, the righteousness, uh, like armor on your chest, 
You're not going to be, if you're not in his strength, you ain't going to be able to have righteousness. You say, how can you have that? Because righteousness, what to be righteousness is, is to be living for God and like Christ. Okay. Christ like, okay. So do you think that you're going to be able to turn away from sin that used to hold you captive in your own strength? Do you think you're going to be able to turn away from other things that used to hold you captive in your strength? No. I would even go as far to say some of the relationships that I had to walk away from was so painful to walk away from that I had to do it in the Lord's strength. Because to live righteous is not easy. It takes his strength. I love that our own armor is weak and brittle. Yes. Yep. We can't even hold the armor he wants us to have without his strength. So the very first thing that you have to do is verse 10, his strength, not mine. I need to put on his strength. I need to put on the Lord's strength. And then I need to use that strength. My strength, no good. The Lord's strength can take me through any and everything and he can do it with grace. Amen. You need the Lord's strength. Yep, his strength, not mine. And then I need to use it. Verse 11 says, uh, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. Uh, In an ESV, it says, look at that. Uh, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. So listen here. Uh, The first thing you need to do is circle put on. It is an action you have to do. You've come to know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. So proud of you. Now you got to know what it's like. You actively have to put on the armor. Yes, Anastasia, action word, put on, equal action word. It's an action word. It takes effort from you. That 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 chest, that that uh breastplate of, of righteousness. You have to choose to put that on. Because you can choose to continue to live in the world if you want. You can choose to continue um going about your life and living it however you want to, if you want. You can do all that if you want. But I don't want to. I want to be more like Christ every day as I'm called to be. So I'm going to put it on. Every morning you have to decide to put this armor on. Okay. Action word. It takes effort from you. You have to put in your sight. All right. You got to put in your part. Listen, the Lord literally never asked us to do anything on our own. He simply asked us to try. He asked us to do our part. And our part is simply usually just showing up. That's it. Usually it is just showing up. He's like, hey, go to that place. And you're like, I don't want to go there. And he's already got it all all planned out. All he's asking you to do is show up. Like this weekend at work, uh, I really didn't want to. I ain't even going to lie. I really didn't want to. Girl was tired. Got a lot to do. I just, eh, you know, the wind was blowing. Okay. And he said, but you still got to show up. I said, fine, I'll go. You know, and I made, and I had amazing conversations, um, met amazing people, like, but I had to participate. He was going to bring those people in, but I had to show up and do my part, right? So you have to actively participate. You got to put it on. And then the rest of it says, um, so what are we putting on? The full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. How do you win a battle against the devil? How do you win a battle against the devil? Put it in the chat. How do you win a battle against the devil? Let me read for you again. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. Call on God for help. Show up, he'll show out. I love it. His word, his word, armor of God. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. You got to put on the armor. 
Yep, the Bible says, if you want to stand against the enemy, you got to put on the armor. And the armor is made up of all these things that y'all have been posting. Some of you have posted prayer. Um, some of you have posted the word. Uh, and, and all of those are true. That is exactly how you defeat the enemy. For it, or it is. But if, if you put the armor of God on, you've put all those things together. You've put on all those things together. So how do you put it on? It's an active choice. So uh, putting it on is an active choice. It's a choice that you are making every day. And as we go through the pieces, that's going to make sense. So it's an active choice that you are using and putting on every day. It's an active choice you are making every day, right? So you got to put it on. I wrote um, our full set of equipment that God gives us to go into battle. It is everything we need. So the full armor of God is our full set of equipment that God gives us to go into battle. It's everything that we need. That's good, Kelsey. Good note. Good note, Kelsey. You know what? I could just start putting like the verse number on here. So that whoever gets this will be easier to go through it. Yep, the word is the one offensive part of the armor of God. Yep, the one weapon he gives us. Yep, amen, that's good. We're going to get to it. Uh, and then in my other Bible, I wrote, what did I write? Uh, what did I write? What did I write? Uh, let's see, what did I write? It's yellow, but I ain't got no yellow here. I'm wondering if I'm missing a page. I didn't glue stuff in when I had this one. Oh, here we go. Putting on the whole armor of God. Yep, is God giving us everything we need to go to battle? So I said the exact same thing. Um, that's so funny. Uh, so I said the exact same thing. So putting on the full armor of God it is everything that we need to go to battle. It is everything that we need to go to battle. Y'all got it? Verse 12 goes on. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the authorities, against the cosmetic powers. Uh, got me a, got me a sticky note in here. Got to pull that up. Um, over, the, over this present darkness against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. This is one of my absolute favorite verses. Honestly, when people give me their Bibles and they ask me to journal in them for their marriage, this is where I always go. Um, but this does not just apply to marriage. It applies to every person and every situation. Um, I know right now in the mentorship, we're studying, we're studying David and I have a digital download to get up today for them. That was supposed to be a plug Friday, but that is, you know, okay. And, um, but any other, David has had this opportunity to take Saul out and he didn't take it. And David doesn't take it because number one, David is uh, convicted. So he can't do it. But number two, David still desires Saul's friendship. He still desires uh, Saul's love, even though Saul has done nothing except seek him to kill him. David is the exact definition of recognizing you're not fighting against flesh and blood. You're not fighting against people. You are fighting against their spiritual blindness. And that is so important to understand. So when you think that maybe you're fighting with a coworker, let's use that. Maybe you think that you're fighting with a coworker and that, uh, that they just, they're out to get you and really don't like you. And you're fighting with this and that and the other. And, and, and y'all just can't agree on nothing. And she don't like you and you don't like her. And y'all are not fighting against each other. There is a spiritual battle going on. Yep. A battle with the flesh that is blinding you both. Anger blinds us uh, and 
anger blinds us and, and keeps us from loving people. Unforgiveness blinds us and keeps us from loving people. Um, and all of those things are not things that you can see. They're all, they're all things that you can't see, things that the, that the enemy has implanted, uh, a root of bitterness taking, taking plant, if you will, right? Like pride, yes. Look, marriages, they do have spiritual blindness, but guess what? You're not fighting against your spouse and you're not fighting against your friend. You're not fighting against your family. You're fighting against what they can't see. So one of the one of my favorite things about my story is when I moved into my small, my small trailer. Um, it looked horrible. There was bullet holes in the windows. There was no doors on the on the on the hall on the doorways. There was no doors. Uh, it was it was wild and out. But I was like, it's perfect. I loved it. I loved that little trailer. But when other people seen it, they were like, "You're gonna live there." Like, yeah. So like, do you know what this neighborhood is? Yeah, I'm going to be good. Yeah, yeah, I got the Lord over here. You know, like they couldn't get it and they didn't get it. But they were just spiritually blind because they couldn't see what I saw. And at that moment, I wasn't when they were yelling at me, calling me a bad mom, all these things. They couldn't see where the Lord was taking me. They were spiritually blind. Today, they'll tell you that. And I, that whole time when they were being mean to me, it wasn't that they didn't love me. It wasn't that it wasn't anything other than they could not see what I saw. The Lord didn't give them the same vision that he gave me. And that's okay. But I could either let a root of bitterness take and let that destroy my relationships <clears throat> or I can just recognize and say it's okay because you're just spiritually blind you know that's what y'all need to recognize about your relationships your friendships your uh anything like anytime you are dealing with people and they seem to let you down you need to be praying for your the scale, I pray for the scales to fall off their eyes. Just like Paul was spiritually blind. Well, his name is Saul first. Just like Saul was spiritually blind, the Lord met him and his eyes had scales on them. And then the scales fell off and Saul turned Paul and he turned to a new person. I pray for that for people. Lord, let the scales fall off of their eyes. But recognize you're not fighting against flesh and blood. You're not fighting against each other. You're fighting against the things that you can't see. You're fighting against the, the darkness and the evilness of this world. And if you'll start recognizing that, and then now let me tell you something. If you start recognizing that, people are going to think you're crazy. You're going to be like, it's not them. It's not them. It's the, it's the spiritual things that we can't see. And then people are going to look at you like, wow, she done lost her. She done lost it. She... She she done lost it. She ain't got she ain't got nothing left, right? But then it turns out you're right, and you're you know like I ain't gonna say it. <laughs> I'm just gonna say my God, you know that I told you something. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. You know, it's not against people. It's against the things you can't see, right? They truly lost it. Yep. Spiritual warfare is such a real thing. I love that, Kim. Yes. You just got to keep praying. You got to keep praying. Yep. Yep. Michelle, I see, I can understand that. And when we when we do, when we got to close the relationships, we just realize, and we just because we close relationships doesn't mean that we quit praying. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that we quit praying um, for them or for each other or any of that. Like you don't quit praying just sometimes. 
All you can do is separate yourself, but keep praying for him. Keep that. Yep. Oh, that color's good. Let me cut the warmer on because I feel it. It's coming. It's trying to get cold. Get get cold. I got a coffee warmer. Amen. Okay. Let's see what I wrote here. Uh, well, that's good. Uh, I'm thinking I put it with this note, and in here I wrote, the enemy comes at us in many directions, but his goal is always the same, to knock Christians down. One of the enemy's most effective weapons is discouragement. That's good. Like the discouragement of he'll never change, or the discouragement of they'll never change, or the discouragement of what if they never come to see the Lord. Like, discouragement was so good. Putting on the armor of God is a choice. So it's literally just a choice you make every day. Yes. That's good, Lisa. Right? Ain't it so quiet? That is not a dumb question at all. So Kim said, uh, so what would you pray for if you may still be blind to some things? Um, Kim, that is not a dumb question at all. And uh, I love that you brought it up because we are completely fooling ourselves. If we think that we are just these, this perfect Christian that isn't blind to some things. I mean, we would, we would absolutely be, uh, What's the word? Blind our own self, I guess, to think that we ain't got no spiritual blindness. Okay. Because sometimes you do. So listen, me and Steve have been talking about that. Like we'll make quick decisions to help people, but technically, uh, but sometimes we make those out of blindness, out of our like love for people. And that has blinded um, of what God wanted us to do. So we can be blinded to many, many things. And I think that's a wonderful question. And I think we always need to be praying. So we don't just pray. Lord, you know, for, for others, I would pray, Lord, let the scales fall off of their eyes so that they see. All right. But for myself, I would pray, Lord, help me see. Lord, if there's something that I'm not seeing the way that you want me to see it, show it to me your way. And let me be, and I mean, you got to pray for all that. So when you're praying and you're like, Lord, let me see it um, your way. Okay. You also need to pray that you will not try to combat his way. So you say, Lord, let me see your way. And then give me the boldness and the courage to, to, to see it that way. Because I know, Lord, that my flesh will try to fight me. My flesh will try to tell me I'm wrong. My flesh will try to tell me that I'm not, that I'm, that I'm somewhere out here in left field. My flesh will try to come back what the Lord is telling me, right? So you need to pray for that. You need to say, Lord, you know, heal me of any spiritual blindness. And then when you reveal it to me, give me the courage and the strength to be able to do or see that the way you've told me to help my help me to not let my flesh take over in that moment. Right. So you would pray for him to reveal the things to you and then give you the courage to put them into action. Does that make sense? Yep, if I think I'm not blind, that's pride. Amen. I love that. Uh, the fairy, 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 fairy. Is that what you said? Um, I pray that God will reveal to me what I need to go grow through, let go, give me eyes to see and ears to hear his word in this situation. I love that. Yes. Ego, edging God out. Look, y'all own it on YouTube this morning. I love it. That's good stuff. I love that. That's good.
How do you keep your heart posture right when separating yourself from people? Oh, that's a good one. Um, because when you leave the situation, don't let you recognize the bitterness and you don't let it take root. You recognize the hurt and don't let it take root. Um, you just need to be very self-aware of how you're feeling, why you're feeling that way. And that part's okay. It's okay to feel hurt. It's okay to be upset. You know, it's okay. The Bible doesn't tell us not to become angry. It tells us don't become angry and sin. It says be angry and sin not. Okay. So you're allowed to be hurt. You're allowed to be angry. Um, you are allowed to feel those things. But do not let them dictate your life. Do not let them make you make decisions. This is, you should make you should make no decisions in your life based on emotion, not one. And I know some people might not agree with that, but I will one hundred and ten percent stand by any time. And you say, "How you know that?" The word doesn't say that. I love that you asked. Um, any time. That you see anybody in the Bible making decisions out of feelings, they end up outside of God's will. Anytime. Go ahead. Read it from front to back. Let me know when you're done. Like anytime that somebody is outside of God's will, they done it. They made decision based on emotion. Not truth. So you do not need to make one life decision, not an area one, based on emotion. You need to do it based on truth, on what God said, on what he wants you to do, how he wants you to do it, right? Yep. Don't allow your feelings to change your heart posture. Yes, there you go. There you go. It's okay to walk away from people because sometimes you're supposed to. But it, it take Jesus as the best example because he is. He went into his hometown. He was going to do some miracles there. They wouldn't accept him. They tried to throw him off a cliff. So he so he left. And when he left, he didn't. They they are the ones who was missing out because they did not get to experience any of the miracles, any of the things that the Lord could have done there. But when he left, he didn't leave with hate. He didn't leave with bitterness. He didn't leave with, with any, he didn't leave with gossip. He just left. He's the best example. He just left. He shake, shook the dust off. Like he instructed the disciples to do when towns wouldn't accept them. Shake the dust off. And keep going. Don't let do not let your emotions dictate your future. Do not let your emotions decide things for you. Because you'll find yourself outside of God's will. So I would say to how do we, you know, walk away and not let things get, keep a very close hold on what the word of God says. Honestly, find you some verses that resonate with what you're going through. Maybe the emotions that you're feeling and then read them a lot. That's what I do. Um, and now I don't have to write them down because I just know them. But that's how I started out. And now I have a verse for every emotion. When I start to be angry, be angry and sin not. Don't you do that, Kelsey. Don't you sin like that. Don't you yell at them. Be angry, sin not. Right? Don't go. Don't go to bed mad. Don't let that root of bitterness take hold. I was reading something yesterday and I thought it was so good. I think this is going to be a two-parter here. Um, but I thought this was so good. Marriages start out really good. But then somebody doesn't live up to the expectation of somebody else. Or maybe you start fighting about little things here and there. And bitterness takes root without you even knowing it. 
And then before long, and this can happen in friendships too. And then before long, you feel distant from each other because bitterness has come in between you. And it was invisible at first. Understand that that's how the enemy works. He doesn't just, boom, I'm here. You're feeling this way. Act on it, act on it, act on it. No. Over time, over time, he will plant a little seed. Just a little bitterness. A little bit right there. Oop, he did it again. A little bitterness. Oh, she did it again. A little bitterness. You know, he's waiting for you to mess up so he can plant the bitterness. And your spouse. I'm not lying. I'm telling y'all right now. And over time, bitterness, more bitterness, more bitterness, more bitterness, more bitterness, and then boom. You don't love each other anymore. You're not connected anymore. And you're heading straight for divorce. Bitterness. It starts out Silent. Your friendships are the same way. It starts out a little bit. Oh, I didn't like that. I can't believe she done that. I don't like that. Oh my goodness, she done it again. Oh, I can't. Uh, uh, gosh, uh, yuck. I do not like that. Next thing. Oh no, I cannot believe she did it again. Oh my goodness, I did not like that. Bitter, 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 bitter. Boom. We're not friends anymore. I'm right. And you see that too, again, a mentorship, we're actually going to talk about it tonight. Apparently, this is what we're talking about this week's bitter. Um, we're going to see that again tonight when we learn how David ended, even ended up with Abigail as a wife to begin with. And it was because her husband was, her husband was hateful, let's say it that way. But then David become bitter. Mm. If we just let bitterness take a little bit, a little bit of root, it'll grow. Mentorship is on Zoom. It is my mentorship that I, uh, that people uh, have a subscription for and they get like all of my downloads and stuff. Um, anything that I write, they get. You can learn all about that in the link in the bio, but we do Zoom three times a week. Um, can't let the root, wait. Can't let it root and take hold. That's right. You got to get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. Satan is a slow slithering snake. Amen. You right. You right. Yep. With spouses, family members, friends too. Yes, all of them. All of it. That's so good. All right, let's keep going. Good morning, Mark. We're going over that armor of God this morning, kind of. I mean, we ain't got to the armor yet. Ah, good verse for bitterness. Ooh, that's good. Mm. I'm going to look that up at the end. Whoops. I'm going to look that up. Y'all, I also got to do the live on the Facebook group page where y'all like posted where y'all wanted things to read for like all these different life situations. Um, I cannot wait to do that. We need to do that. Maybe we'll do that in this and another one. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I got lots of plans. Okay. Um, next verse here. Where are we at? Because we talked a lot about that. So just realizing that your fight isn't with each other. Um, but with spiritual wickedness, the goal is to knock us down. Right? So our fight is not with each other. It's not with the person in front of you. It's with the things you cannot see. All right? Next verse here. 
you got, let's see, verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Let's see what I write here. Stand in faith, God's will, unity, love, the gospel, etc. Standing means you will be attacked, but we must not be scared. It means we do not give up. That's so good, Kelsey. Let's see what I write here. Um, take up the full armor of God so that you may resist the evil day, having prepared everything to take your stand. Ooh, yes. Ooh, take your stand. That's right. I look, oh no, oh no. About lost it. About lost y'all over on TikTok. <clears throat> Guess I've been here an hour. Uh, I love what I wrote in this one. When you can't do anything else, just stand. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. I'm going to do that bitterness scripture. Oh, that is what you think. Ephesians 4, 31 through 32 for bitterness. Uh, she said 4, 31 and 32. Let all bitterness, anger, wrath, shouting, and slander be removed from you. I love that. Yes. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another just as God also forgave you. Amen. I agree. I agree. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. I agree. hundred percent. Yep. Look. That's good. Forgiving 70 times 7. Love that. Yes. I love that. When you can't do nothing else, just take your stand. Just stand. Stand for the truth. Stand for the gospel. Stand for what you know is, is true. God, God's truth. I love that. I love that. I love reading my Bible notes. Stand in faith. God's will. Unity. Love. The gospel standing means you'll be attacked. Amen. But we must not be scared. I love that because me and somebody else who was, I don't know, but I was talking to somebody uh, this weekend, another one of those connections. Look, I had Bible study Friday night too. Yo, um, this weekend, just I need a weekend for the weekend. Um, any hooser, um, we were talking about that. We were talking about how, like, Some people start off really loving me and my teaching and my way of teaching uh, the Bible and my way of, of all this. Some people love that. Some people start off loving it. But then when they start realizing that it's going to step on their toes every time they watch one of my videos, they don't like it. So taking a stand means that when you're standing on God's truth, sometimes people just ain't going to like you. Taking a stand for what God stands for means that people won't like you. Listen, I will even say, oh, the pretty bird, he's looking at me. I will even say that if you think you're standing for God's word, and nobody dislikes you, then you need to evaluate the word you're standing for. Because scripture says that the world, when the world hates you, remember that I've overcome the world. When people hate you, remember that they hated me first. So if Jesus is literally warning people, listen, when they hate you, he didn't say if, he said when. It's only a matter of time. Anytime you hear that word in the Bible, when, when this or when that, it means it's only a matter of time. He didn't say if they dislike you, they might dislike you. you know. No, he said when. When they hate you, remember that they hated me first. When you don't feel like you fit into the world, remember that I've overcome it. Like when? Only a matter of time. So I'm going to say that if you think you're standing for the Lord and not one person dislikes you, then you need to evaluate what you're standing for.
because you're not you're not here to be liked. The favor of God doesn't mean that people love you. The favor of God means he'll send you the people you need. Amen. I've watched him do it. It's so good. I love the people that the Lord has sent me. The, the people that just message me to check on me. The people who call me. I, I love each and every one of them. The friendships that we have. Like, I mean, just all the things. Like, he'll send you who you need. But not everybody will like you. And he'll even remove people that did like you. And that really hurts. That really stings. But you know what just popped into my mind? When he removes people, and it hurts because they loved you and you loved them. They meant a lot to you. Um, I've had it happen multiple times. Multiple times where um, they just kind of took a wrong turn somewhere. And then it was, it's been, it's just happened multiple times. And this just hit me. Jesus knew that Ju Jesus chose Judas. He loved him. The hurt Jesus must have felt knowing that Judas didn't love him the way he, the way that Jesus loved him. You know what I mean? Like, that's good. I don't know. Why I just thought of that. I've never really thought about it. So say like that, like when people hurt me, even though like I love them and I hate that, I hate that we can't be on the same page and it just really hurts, you know, like when, when you're, when your friendships, you know, start to fade or maybe you got to remove yourself from the presence of somebody. Um, it really does hurt, you know, but Jesus knew that hurt. Amen. He knew that hurt. He knew that hurt. There is not one hurt that you can go through, friend, that Jesus ain't already showed you how to deal with. Amen. That's so good. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to tell you that if you put on this whole armor, God, which we ain't even got into yet. I think I'm going to try to get to the armor, maybe. We'll go a little bit. We'll see how long. We'll go a little bit longer. Um. But man, that's good. Taking a stand for the Lord. Not everybody's getting like you. Taking a stand sometimes means that things are going to try to come against you. But if you will stand for what is true, you will never stand alone. That's so good. Yep, that's good. Yes. Okay. Uh, where are we at here? All right. The next verse here is. Hold please. 14. Trying to move my little sticky notes. Hey, that's good. Um, stand there for. Having fastedness. On the belt of truth. And having put on the breastplate. Breastplate. <laughs> of righteousness. I cannot talk. Okay. And then the CSB. Stand therefore with truth. Like a belt around your waist. Righteousness like armor on your chest. That's good. All right. So belt of truth. You got to put that on first. You got to put that on first. I put it. Put that on first. Gets you ready for battle. Puts you in a battle state of mind. God's truth and word. That's good. Uh, let's see. What did I do on this one? Um, either I. So I don't have my notes for that. Don't even have my notes for that. Um, there has to be a paper missing somewhere. Has to be a paper missing somewhere in there, but that's all right. Um, I 
I love that. I love that. Okay. Bell or Truth, why do you put it on first? So I put, put it on first. Get you ready for battle. Um, put you in a battle state of mind. It's God's word and God's truth. Why do you think you got to put that Bell of Truth on first? I love that, friend. Why do you put that belt of truth on truth on first? D said maybe strength to protect us. Okay. Yep, suiting up for battle. Yes, I love that. The imagery. Because it's a oh, I love that. Uh Let's see. Miss K. Jewel. I love that she said because it's, it's like a foundation. It's the foundation. Somebody else said, yes, it is the foundation. Yep. Mark said the battle of truth is to recognize that God is true. Amen. To protect you from the enemy's lies. I love it. It's our foundation. That belt of truth is God's word of truth. It is our foundation. It is the foundation of what is true in the Lord. And you cannot go to battle with the enemy without knowing what is true. You cannot go to battle with the enemy without knowing the scriptures about bitterness. Otherwise, he'll plant it and you won't be able to see it. You cannot go to battle with the enemy without knowing um, that your priorities are God, spouse, children, home, then work. Because if you don't go with those priorities that the Bible set for you, then guess what? Your priorities are going to start to get messed up when things get a little hasty around there. You know what I'm saying? So truth is your foundation for everything else. It's how you know what's right and wrong. It's how you know how to live and not live. It's how you know how to recognize unforgiveness, bitterness. Um, what that verse said it. It's how you recognize bitterness, anger, wrath, uh, slander. Um, it's how you recognize uh, unforgiveness. It's how you recognize everything. It's how you recognize whether somebody is for the Lord or not. It's how you recognize whether y'all share the same spirit, the Holy Spirit or not. Truth is clarity. Ooh, I love that. That is good. Truth is clarity. Yes. Discernment. Yes. It is that truth is how we decide what we know is true based on truth, not emotion. Do you see? We're going back here. This whole armor of God never once says put on your emotion. First, it tells you to put on the truth because truth will be able to combat your emotion. You got it? Your emotion will say, leave them all, run, 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 run as fast as you can. Get out, get out, get out, okay? But truth says, don't leave here yet. I didn't say to move, right? Um, that's, that's really good. Truth says, don't leave that marriage yet. I didn't tell you to move. Truth says, I know that you're feeling like this is never going to get better. Truth says, I know that you feel like this will never change, like this will never get better. But the truth is, God is in the restoration business. The truth is, Romans, what is it, 8, 18 maybe? Nothing compares to the joy that's coming. Truth says, not my strength, but his. Truth says, my emotions are wearing me out, but God's truth will always stand. That's good. I love that. I think that's so good. All right, your very next one, your breastplate of righteousness. Again, listen, again, the reason putting on your armor is so hard because putting on the truth is not easy. Ooh, 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 that's good. Let me tell, let me say that again for the people in the back. Putting on the truth is not easy. Standing for what God says to stand for, not easy. Uh, speaking up about the things that God says is true. 
not easy. Like that, is, I know that is a whole word. I talk so different. Like, listen, the reason the armor, you got to put it on in his strength, not yours. You can't carry that. There is no way you can carry the truth without your protector and defender with you, friend. Like there's just no way. There is no way you'll be able to stay in that unhappy marriage. Oh man, there is just no, there's no way you'll be able to stay in that unhappy marriage where, where you just feel like you're not seen and you're not heard and you're not loved and, and they don't sit, they're not with the Lord like you're with the Lord and they're not going to church with you. And there's no way you'll be able to stay in that if you're not standing on God's truth. There's no way you'll be able to stay in that if you're not staying out of his strength, not yours. Your strength says go, run, leave, don't look back. His strength says do not leave yet. I'm still working and preparing a way for restoration. Listen, oh, that is good. That is so good. Everything in your life is like that. You will want to run. Standing on God's truth is not easy. It's going to be so hard because you're going to want to leave it. You're not going to want to deal with it. We are humans that really just do not like hard things. We get intimidated by hard things. I don't care what y'all say. We are, re we are ready to run at all costs. No, that is why you got to put on his strength to even carry the truth because the truth means you got to stay even though it's hard. The truth says you can't get a divorce right now. The truth says God will restore it, but it's going to be many years of being alone. The truth says you can't leave here. And it's going to be painful to stay, but you can't go. I'm experiencing that in my own life. It is so painful to stay where my shop is. It drives me batty. I do not... I love my build and I love where I'm at, but like where I'm at as a whole is just like, you know, okay. But I don't get to leave yet. I used to, oh, it's so good. I used to pray, Lord, please remove me. Please remove me and place me somewhere else. That's not like this. You know, I don't, don't want to be here. And he's like, Kelsey, if you won't live among them, how are you going to reach them? I was like, my, hey, Amy and sorry, my bad. I'm kidding. Leave me playing right. I'm good right here. I, I'm sorry about that. Sorry, I, my, thank you for, you know, taking the scales off my eyes. That's, that's my bad. Forgive me, you know, sorry. Okay, because I was ready to just exit. His truth says it's going to be painful, but you got to stay. But don't you worry, Kelsey. You're not staying by yourself. I'm right here with you. When all this goes up in smoke, you're not gonna. I'm with you. I'm like, amen. As long as I ain't here alone, Lord. As long as you and me, I'm good. You know? Truth says you don't get to leave when it's hard. It is. It is so hard to discern when God is telling you to leave a situation. Amen. Because, you know... I'm telling people that they can't leave their marriages or their situations just because they got hard. Please understand that. You're not allowed to leave just because it gets hard. Because the enemy will feed us a bunch of lies. You need that foundation. Yep. That's so we got the belt of truth. It's your foundation. All right. The belt of truth, your foundation. The breast breastplate, I don't know why I can't say that this morning, of righteousness. Was provides protection, righteousness received by faith in Jesus, gives confidence and awareness, gives confidence and awareness. That breastplate. Yes, that's good. Yes. That breastplate of righteousness. It will be so heavy for you to carry. If you do not do it in his strength. Because that means that you don't get to fit in with the world anymore. I love that protects from a deceitful heart. Ooh, that's good. That is good. I love 
Love that fran. Mm. That breastplate of righteousness has so it's so much. I mean, we could we could talk about that all day. Like your essential protection, you know, your heart, all your essential organs, you know, that you need to live. But it is, how do I say? It is what will set you apart from living in the world. Because his righteousness, his call for us to live righteous, means that we will have to give up things that we just don't want to. It means we will have to walk away from sin. It means we will have to walk away from people, places, and things that get us into trouble. Living set apart. And living set apart is so hard. Whoa, you better. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Steve sat down about Phil. Bless his heart. Living set apart. Living with the Lord's. How he calls us to be righteous is, a, is to be living set apart. And living set apart is hard. Yeah, if our organs are not protected, we will die spiritually. I love that. I know, bless his heart. He did. He just, you know, like when you sit there and he like don't fall out. That's what happened. Bless him. So, I'm thinking those are really good for today. And we could finish the rest of this on Wednesday. And then we could do Judges on Friday. Because I really want to have time to talk about each and every one. Like, Mm, 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 mm. And I think we made about halfway through. And that way you'll have time to meditate and really think about the belt of truth and what that breastplate of righteousness is for and how you can use it, um, how the Lord wants you to use it. It'll really give you time to meditate on his strength, not yours. I mean, there's so much for you to sit and think about that we talked to. Or talked about, talked that we talked about um, this morning. But that belt of truth is your foundation. Right? I know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All glory to God. Amen. Because I was not ready. I did not believe like Dina be calling me. She's like, it popped up on my phone. I'm like, hello. <laughs> She's like, it's Dina. I'm like, oh no, it's after seven. <laughs> I know. Like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Praise the Lord for Dina. Or we wouldn't be here this morning. <laughs> I'd still be sleeping. <laughs> Slept right through. My kids still be sleeping. Nobody would have got to school. Look at the Lord providing. Amen. Amen. Protects deceitful heart from things that are not right in God's eyes. I love that. I love that. I love you too, Tracy. Slept right on through that thing. Right on through it. Confident to be set apart. Breastplate of righteousness. I love that. Yes, girl. I love that, Courtney. Y'all are good. Dina be Dina. <laughs> yes. That's hilarious. I love it. That's so funny. Love that. Man, I ain't even finished the old cup of coffee yet. I tell you what, that coffee warmer that Lisa sent me, I tell y'all, I kid you not, that thing works better than the than the coffee pot. I ain't even playing. It gets your coffee so hot. I can hear myself talk on your phone. Don't you tell me I'm talking too loud. I'll kick you out of this office. <laughs> I don't know where Lisa got it, but it looks like this. It's super cute. It's kind of hot. 
It floods up. It's even got like a little light on it. It's super nice. I love it. You could probably use that thing and make me some ramen. I could. It gets hot. I could make me some ramen on it. That is so funny. Tracy, everybody's name is on the wall. If they have, um, or not the wall, but the door. If they have, um, if they've donated, we've got everything on there. Other verses that you can read about righteousness. I feel like it's any verses that's talking about being set apart. Hold, please. Let's see if this thing's charged. And it's dead as doornails. Um, I don't have a way to look it up. I don't even have my computer in here. Can I use your phone? No. I know, I know. What you looking uh, Bible verses about righteousness. She wants some more. Gotcha. Hold on. Right, later. We will definitely be praying for you, friend. Yeah, had it for a good while. <laughs> um, I don't know. I didn't buy Lisa. About, uh, there she is. Uh, Lisa Keith. She got it off Amazon, I think, because that's who delivered it. Um, I don't see a brand on it, though. Like, it ain't branded with anybody's name. All right, y'all ready? Bible verses about righteousness. Um, we got 1 John 2, 29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who, practice, who practices righteousness is born of him. I love that. So 1 John 2, 29. Um, Ephesians 2, 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So Ephesians 2.10. Psalm 119.172. Psalm 119.172. My tongue shall speak of your word for all your commandments are righteousness. Oh, I love that one. That's a good one. Mm hmm Oh, that's so good. Jeremiah 9 24. But let him who glories. So be okay, hold on. Jeremiah 9 24. But let him who glories, glory in this, that he understand and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. That's a good one. My belly's growling. You want a biscuit? No, I don't want a biscuit. Biscuit's bread. Bread makes you tired. I'm already tired. You know? Already tired. Mmm. -hmm. John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Ooh, that's good. And then Romans 6, 1 through 4 is really good. We'll do that one, the last one. Uh, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Ooh, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Ooh, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized unto his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. And wait, that just as Christ was raised, from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. Amen. That's good. 
This shirt is not on my site. Uh, I bought it at a little bit like local boutique. It says, don't worry, honey. Round here, we leave the judge into Jesus. But don't you make no mistake. He calls me to righteous judgment, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> All right, that's what the Bible says. That's what it says. That's what it says. He can have his back. Yep, the set apart on YouTube. Yes, the set apart would be really good for the righteousness too. Set apart a YouTube. One of my YouTube videos. That'd be a good one. I love it too. What is that? Righteous judgment. Righteous judgment is judgment that the Lord does call us to have. So, um, a lot of people like to throw out, you know, do not judge. The Bible says, do not judge, do not judge, do not judge. You're not supposed to judge by, by worldly eyes. So, like, by the way, somebody looks, you might see somebody walking down the street, and you're like, it ain't no way they know the Lord because of the way that they look, because of the way things seem. Um, a judgment based on um, uh, what your judgment based on your eyes, okay? Not based on a righteous judgment is based on the truth of God. So there are non-negotiables in, in our in the truth in the word of God. And you are you are to judge those things. You're not supposed to do the things that he's told you not to do. So if we say, I'm gonna do that because so and so's doing it and I'm trying to reach them, no. You cannot fall into sin trying to reach somebody. You'll never reach somebody that way. You have to be willing to have a righteous judgment about it. Yep, it's a different judgment. That'd be a good, we could do a coffee talk on that one day. Like, what is righteous judgment? Yeah, do you just need to Google the shirt? Um, because I got it from a local boutique that doesn't even have a website. Otherwise, I would share the website with y'all. Righteous judgment, though, makes you not compromise with the judgment with the world. I mean... Yep, hold believers accountable. Yep, yep. So, I won't judge people, but I will hold you accountable to what the Word of God says, and I will tell you when it's not right. No shame in my game. I will tell you. If you're walking down the wrong road, I'm going to tell you. And that's how I lose a lot of friends, if we're being honest, is because I'm not scared to tell you that I think you're wrong and what I think the Lord said about it. I'm not... Um, and I can prove it to you in scripture. All right. Let's go ahead and pray this morning, friends. Let's pray before we leave. Um, if any of you do not know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, but you want to, I invite you to reach out to me, message me. Um, let's get that right for you. Let's get that right for you. Um, let's have a conversation and I would love to be a part of that in your life. Um, and I would love for you to just come to know the Lord in that way. Um, but in that way, um, let's go ahead and, and pray this morning. Courtney said, I want my friends to speak truth to me. Amen, sister. But what about when they speak the truth? We do not want to hear. That's usually what happens. They'll tell us a truth that we don't want to hear. And that is how friendships get destroyed. So that's, again, why you got to be on guard. Don't let that bitterness or unforgiveness or things take root. Are they, do they just care about God's will in your life? You know, is that is that what they care about? Um, because sometimes we say we want the truth until we get the truth. And then we're like, never mind, don't tell me. You know what I'm saying? Like, never mind. Don't want to. You know? Uh, I love that, Jennifer. Yes. Yeah, when we don't want to hear it, it means we really need to hear it. Yes. See you on Zoom, friend. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's pray this morning. 
Lord, we just come to you this morning and we praise you and we thank you, Lord. We praise you for all you've done. We thank you for all you're going to do, Lord. Lord, this morning as we as we studied, Lord, we studied about your ways, about your armor, Lord, the armor of God, Lord. Let us be bold and have courage enough to put that on, to be able to stand, Lord, to be able to stand for you, to be able to put on your strength, to be able to stand for your truth, to be able to hold your truth, even when our emotions try to run wild, Lord. Lord, we just want to be people after you, people running after you, Lord. And Lord, we can trust that when we have to stay somewhere, we really don't want to, Lord, that, that you will feel us in that moment, Lord, that you will be the strength that we need to be able to endure, Lord, that it will just be here to grow our faith. Lord, let's pray for those scales to fall off the eyes of others. Let's pray for our own to fall off of ours and have the courage to see when you speak to us, Lord, to be able to walk and do as you call us to. Lord, if anybody doesn't know you this morning, I pray that they will reach out and come to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Come to know you like I know you, Lord. Lord, because Lord, if they knew you like I knew you, uh, it wouldn't even be a second thought, Lord. Lord, I'm just so thankful for uh, all of my amazing friends, Lord, all the people that showed up for your word, Lord, all the people that hold me accountable, Lord. Lord, I'm just so thankful for each and every one of them. I know that they each have prayer requests that you know how to answer, Lord, so give them the comfort to, to trust you, Lord, and know that you got this in the palm of your hand. Lord, I'm just so thankful for the day. Keep us safe and protected until we get to come together again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 All right. All right, friends. Uh, we'll finish this Wednesday morning at uh, 7 a.m. Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. We will be back here doing this again, and we will finish up the armor of God. And then we will do some of the judges, which I'm probably going to record a little TikTok video about the judges, too, because it's so good. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> anyway. All right, friends. I love y'all so big. I've got a fabulous rest of the day. Message me if you need anything. I'm going to be answering all my messages today. So there is that. Um, but I love y'all. I'll see my membership people tonight, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye, you guys.